Here is our second example of how we deal with heat and calorimetry. But here I wanted to go to a very special example. Here it says, what is the heat required to raise 20 grams of ice, not ISA, but ice, it should be an E, uh, at minus 10 degrees centigrade to steam at 110 degrees centigrade. So here what's happening is not only are we heating things up, we're also going to go through phase changes. And so I wanted to illustrate how we do that. So first of all, we start with a block of ice at minus 10 degrees centigrade. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add heat to it until the ice now reaches ice at zero degrees centigrade. So first we're going to raise the temperature of the ice. Then we're going to add some more heat. So plus Q. So this is plus Q. And now what's going to happen is we're going to turn, in, turn out with, uh, this is of course uh, 20 grams. So 20 grams. The amount of mass of course doesn't change. This is still 20 grams. But now we'll have water at zero degrees centigrade. So by adding heat to ice at zero, we turn it into water. We go through a phase change. Then if we add some more heat to it, plus Q, then eventually adding enough heat, we'll have H2O at still 20 grams of the water, but now at 100 degrees centigrade. So we keep adding heat to the water. The temperature will keep going up, going up, going up until eventually the temperature reaches a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. What happens when you continue to add heat now? Plus Q, now the water will begin to boil, will begin to boil away. And as the water boils away, it turns into steam and we'll end up with 20 grams of steam, of steam still at 100 degrees centigrade. So it goes through a second phase change. Now what happens when we continue to add more heat? The steam temperature will then go up. And so add some more heat plus Q and eventually you'll end up with 20, uh, 20 grams of steam at 110 degrees centigrade. So how much heat does that all require? Well, whenever we simply are changing the temperature of a substance, we use the mc delta t equation. So in this case, uh, let's call this q1, q2, q3, q4, and q5. So we'll have heat in five steps. First step, q1. So delta q1 is equal to mc delta t. So the mass of the ice is 20 grams. The c of the ice, now we gave you c of water. But we didn't give you C of ice. It turns out the specific heat of ice is only half that of water. So that ends up being 0.5 calories per gram per centigrade degree. And then of course the change in the temperature from minus 10 to zero, that would be 10 centigrade degrees. And so this ends up being 10 times 10, that would be 100 calories of heat required to take the ice from minus 10 to zero. Now we go through a phase change, no change in temperature, so we don't have a delta T there. There what we call is the delta Q2, the heat required to go from ice to water, is equal to the mass of that times what we call the latent heat of fusion, L sub F. And let me write that down so we don't forget. So it's called the latent heat of fusion, which means to turn one gram of ice into one gram of water to go through that phase change, it turns out it needs a certain amount of energy. That's called the latent heat of fusion. And in the case of going from ice to water, it is 80 calories. So this is equal to, uh, how many grams do we have? 20 grams, forgot how many grams we had. 20 grams times 80 calories per gram. So there's nothing about temperature in there, it's simply how many calories for each gram for the phase change. In the case of going from ice to water, it's 80 calories per gram that you have to add to the ice to make it melt. Now, if you take 80 calories away from water at zero degrees centigrade, it will then freeze, so it goes both directions. So in this case, 20 times 80, which is six, 1,600 calories. So we need 100 calories to go from minus 10 to zero with the ice, and then it takes 1,600 calories to melt the ice, to go from ice and melt it into water. Now we want to heat up the water from zero degree centigrade to 100 degree, degree centigrade. For that, we need the delta Q equals MC delta T again. But in this case, I want to call that delta Q1, delta Q2. Now we're at delta Q3 
is equal to mc delta t. So now we're going from 0 degrees centigrade water to 100 degrees centigrade water. We still have 20 grams of the water. Specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram per centigrade degree. And the change in temperature would be 100 centigrade degrees. So in that case, 20 times 100, which is 2,000, we will need 2,000 calories to take water from 0 degrees centigrade and get it all the way up to 100 degrees centigrade. Of course, we're talking about 20 grams of water. If it was 30 grams of water, it would take 3,000 calories, of course. At that point, we now want to take the water that's now at a boiling point and turn it completely into steam at the same temperature. That's another phase change. So therefore, for delta Q4, that's going to be equal to the mass of that times the latent heat of, in this case, we call it vaporization. We're vaporizing water into steam, and so we need to know the latent heat of vaporization. So in this case, that's 20 grams of water times a very large 540 calories per gram. Notice, to melt ice, you need 80 calories per gram, but to turn water into steam, you need 540 calories per gram. You need an enormous amount of heat because those molecules are polar molecules and they're attracted to each other. So to break them apart and turn them into steam, which essentially is a form of gas, then you need a lot of heat, a lot of energy. So in this case, that would be equal to 10,800 calories to turn boiling water, 20 grams of it, into steam. And then finally, we want to raise the temperature of steam from 100 to 110 degrees centigrade. So for this case, you need delta Q5 is equal to mc delta T. There's no phase change, simply a change in the temperature. So we still have 20 grams of the water. Multiply times the specific heat of steam. Now again, you can look it up in a book or you can realize that it's about the same as the specific heat of ice, just slightly less. It's basically about 0.48 calories per gram per centigrade degree, times, of course, going from 100 to 110, that's 10 centigrade degrees. And notice that this will be equal to, not 100 calories, but slightly less, 96 calories to go to that last step. So, now again, quickly reviewing, to go from I, taking 20 grams of ice from minus 10 to 0 degrees centigrade, that's simply delta Q equals mc delta t. We know the mass, we know the, the specific heat of the ice, and the change in the temperature, 100 calories. Now we go through a phase change, no change in temperature, so it's simply the mass times the latent heat of fusion, 20 grams, the latent heat of fusion for, for ice going from, for, going from ice to water is 80 calories per gram, total of 1600 calories. Now we heat up the water that's at zero degrees centigrade all the way up to the boiling point. So 20 grams times the heat, specific heat of water, one calorie per gram per centigrade degree, times 100 centigrade degrees, 2000 calories. Now we go again through a phase change, just like we did over here. So it's gonna be the mass times the latent heat, in this case, vaporization, 20 grams times 540 calories per gram, and finally, we raise the temperature from 100 to 110 degrees. It's now steam, so the only difference is that the specific heat of steam is 0.48 calories per gram per centigrade degree. And so if you then want to know how much does it take to go from here all the way to the end, we just had to add them all up. So delta Q total is equal to 100 calories plus 1,600 calories plus 2,000 calories plus 10,800 calories, plus 96 calories. And when you add all up, that's the total energy required to go from minus 10 degrees all the way up to 110 degrees. And that's a good example to, to illustrate both things, where whenever there's a temperature change, it's simply mc delta t. Whenever there's a phase change, it's the mass times the latent heat of either fusion or vaporization. And that is, of course, true for any substance, but water is a very familiar substance, so it's a good example to show you how to do that. One more change is that instead of using calories, you want to use joules. All you have to do is multiply everything by, you guessed it, 4.186. So instead of 1 here, this would be 4.186. Instead of 80, this would be 80 times 4.186 and so forth, if you rather do this in joules instead of calories.